you will no longer be able to park for free at any BART station. I'm Michelle Quintero, and I'll tell you which stations have recently started charging these fees and how it's affecting some riders. Playing with dolls has never been so smart. I'm Sheree Honeycutt, and coming up on State of Events, I'll tell you why. Welcome to State of Events. I'm Erica Cattere. And I'm Diane Tell. Thanks for joining us. Most BART riders are now paying for parking. BART recently started charging for parking at most stations in order to help pay for their maintenance. Michelle Contero has information on how these fees are affecting riders of one East Bay City. Michelle? Concord was the first station out of the four free parking lots to start charging fees. The North Concord and Oakland Coliseum BART stations also recently hopped on board. The Hayward station will begin charging on December 8th. Not some, surprisingly, some riders I talked to are not too happy about having to pay to park. The end of free parking kicked off at the Concord station last month. The Concord station was one of the last four stations to offer free parking in the BART system. Riders will now have to remember their stall numbers to pay the $1 daily parking fee but some commuters feel the fees are unnecessary. They shouldn't be charging for parking unless they're providing some extra services like extra pr uh, police protection or valet parking or preferred parking for seniors. That's why we're, uh, you know, we're, we're taking mass transit to keep the cars off the road and you know, parking should be included. And this is forcing some commuters to make adjustments to their parking strategy. I'm gonna have to park on the street. So that's not cool. Very hard to park on the street. It's very hard. But transit officials say the fees are necessary since it costs a dollar and thirty-three cents a day to maintain each parking space in the system. The revenue generated from the new parking fees will be spent on adding shuttle and feeder services to stations, as well as their maintenance. According to BART, the easiest way to pay for parking is to set up your Clipper card to connect with BART's parking payment program. Riders may also pay with cash by using the ad fare machine. Commuters do not have to worry about parking fees on weekends and weekdays after 3. Reporting live, I'm Michelle Quintero, State of Events. Back to you, Erica. Thanks, Michelle. As part of their campaign to stop texting and driving, AT&T released a study that shows 75% of people still text while they drive. Over 1,000 people participated in the study, and 98% said they are aware of the dangers of texting and driving. AT&T is also planning to extend their free Drive Mode app to iPhone users as part of their campaign. The app silences cell phone notifications when it detects a car moving faster than 15 miles per hour. Thanksgiving Day is next Thursday, November 27, but many people are more concerned with next Friday, November 28. Leslie McKinney tells us why. Leslie? Thank you, Diane. Black Friday is known as the beginning of the Christmas shopping season, but the holiday shopping is creeping in on another holiday. The day after Thanksgiving has been the busiest shopping day for years, but the big decision for many people is whether or not to brave the crowds. Even with all the great sales, it seems many people enjoy a more relaxing holiday. Do you like Black Friday? No. Do you ever go out and shop on Black Friday? No. Why no, not? Never. 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 Because of the, of the crowd. Too crowded. Too crowded. I don't think the sales are as good as when you go another time. And there's nothing that we have to get that we have to get it the day after Thanksgiving. Each year, it seems both crowds and aggression increase on Black Friday. But the time at which stores open has also been increasing. Stores like Target, Macy's, and Walmart will open at 6 p.m. this Thanksgiving. Best Buy will open at 5 p.m. on Thanksgiving Day. Other retailers are giving their employees some time to enjoy the holiday. Costco, GameStop, and Nordstrom are some of the stores that will stay closed this Thanksgiving Day. A lot of people will be home enjoying Thanksgiving dinner, but others love getting a jump start on holiday shopping. And there are some deals out there. Last year, Apple offered up to $61 off on tablets, so, if you're braving the crowds the day after Thanksgiving, be a smart shopper and do your research. With State of Events, I'm Leslie McKinney. Erica, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Leslie. Speaking of holiday shopping, there's one new toy on the market that's causing quite some buzz. Sheree Honeycutt joins us in the studio with more. Sheree, what's this new toy? 
Erica, it's a doll without heels, makeup, and she comes with her own hammer. This doll is not only giving girls something to play with, she's an inspiration, and she may be sparking an industry. All right, guys, the Blockstown Film Festival is still ruined, and we gotta save it. Meet Goldie. She loves to be creative and invent stuff. She, her friends, and trusty dog Nacho are giving a new meaning to playing with dolls. Instead, girls are creating with them. Goldie is a creation of Goldie Blocks. The Oakland-based company wants to get girls thinking and show them that careers in engineering are a possibility. We have a global shortage of engineers, and women represent the largest untapped resource. It's so important to get girls into engineering and technology. In fact, techbridgegirls.org found 20% of girls are encouraged to be actresses, while only 10% are encouraged to be engineers. 12% of engineers in the U.S. are women, with 2% of that number being minorities. And men? They're three times more likely to choose engineering as a career or major than women. The company says they hope Goldie shows girls it's okay to build something. Goldie retails for $25, which is about the same as Barbie. You can find her at Toys R Us, and that this Thanksgiving, she'll be larger than life with her own float at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Reporting live, I'm Sheree Honeycutt for State of Events. Back to you. All right, Sheree, the San Francisco Marin Food Bank says that the need for food in this area has increased 20% since 2008. But an act of kindness is going to benefit tens of thousands of people. Reporter Sammy Mamo went to the food bank to find out more. Thank you, Diane. Foster Farms is in the holiday spirit. They're going to help feed a lot of people with the generous donation they just made at the San Francisco Marin Food Bank. Foster Farms brought a big rig full of turkey to the San Francisco Marin Food Bank with one thought in mind, feeding people for Thanksgiving. We are uh, donating 750 turkeys, that's about um, 13,000 pounds that will enable us to feed around, help feed, 14,000 uh, families. According to the food bank, one in four people in San Francisco and Marin are at risk of hunger. This program in particular, around Thanksgiving, will provide uh, turkeys for about 85,000 uh, families up and down the West Coast. And while they've just received this huge donation of turkeys, the food bank needs more food and funding to help families in need so that they can enjoy a traditional Thanksgiving dinner. The food bank estimates that they distribute more than 47 million pounds of food to the community this year alone, which equates to more than 107,000 meals every day yet they're still in need for more. This holiday season, they can use all the help they can get, as can other food banks across the Bay Area. A big rig accident led to the Alameda County Food Bank receiving an unexpected donation of over 40,000 pounds of turkey. An unfortunate incident that means a brighter Thanksgiving for thousands. Reporting live in San Francisco, Sammy Mamo, State of Events. Thanks, Sammy. Mashed potatoes, cranberries, and green bean casserole. Yes, I'm talking about that Thanksgiving dinner. For most people, the important item on the table is the turkey. This year, there's a higher demand and fewer turkeys. So you'll see a rise in prices, but it'll only cost you a few cents more per pound. The government estimates the price will range from $1.12 to $1.16 per pound. Still to come on State of Events, music artists are starting to pull their music from Spotify. Christy Reno will explain who and why. And later, what do pizzas, diapers, and lotions have in common? The Green Festival. Victoria Alanese has more after the break. San Francisco State wants to point smokers in the right direction. I'm Oscar Maciel, and coming up on State of Events, I'll show you why some students are making their own rules. Before City Car Share, we were spending a lot of money on gas and insurance. I felt like I had to check my bank account every time I went driving. City Car Share is great because the membership includes insurance and a gas card. City Car Share gives you the benefits of using a car without the hassle of owning one. Welcome back to State of Events. The flight of 43 missing Mexican students is gaining a lot of attention. Activists in San Francisco Mission District marched to protest the actions of the Mexican government. Rocky Matters was there and joins us with a live report. Rocky. Thank you. And, in, and it's not just in San Francisco. The voices of protests continue to be heard all over the world, and in some cases, with violence. 
Fortunately, the San Francisco march was peaceful. Aquí estamos y no nos vamos. Aquí estamos y no nos vamos. Here we are and we are not leaving. Were some of the phrases chanted on Saturday's march in San Francisco. Protesters marched all down Mission, then Market, in solidarity with those protesters in Mexico that accused the Mexican government to act slowly on the disappearance and apparent murder of 43 students from a rural college in Ayotzinapa, Mexico. We, the people who live outside of Mexico, we know about the situation and we are trying to uh, put pressure on the Mexican government to do something about the safety and the violence. Protests in Mexico are intensifying and are getting violent. Whether through confrontation with the police or trying to enter the National Palace, people want a clear answer as to what happened to their students and are asking the president to resign. A message that was heard loud and clear here in San Francisco. Peña Nieto is just the puppet from the American government. So if we mobilize the people in USA demanding the stop of military aid, the government of Peña Nieto will collapse. Mexican officials say that the students were killed and their bodies burned. According to the Mexican Department of Justice, it will be hard to determine if the remains are those of the students. Demonstrators say that they will continue to protest until they get clear answers. Reporting live in the newsroom for State of Events, I'm Rocky Mathers. Back to you, Erica. Thanks, Rocky. An ambitious San Francisco program to help kindergartners enroll in college is the first of its kind in the United States. It helps children attending public schools in the city save money for college. The account comes with a $50 deposit from taxpayer funds. That amount doubles for kids in the National Student Lunch Program. The program is meant to teach kids how to invest at an early age. It also offers matching incentives from local organizations and businesses. For many students at San Francisco State University, a cigarette is a welcome break. There are smoking restrictions on campus. So, we wonder how are students coping? Reporter Oscar Maciel takes a look at a smoker's life on a smoke-free campus. Oscar? Thanks, Diane. Well, this year, schools within the UC system ban smoking on campus. However, SF State is a smoke-free campus, which makes it a kinder and gentler smoking environment. It allows smoking in certain areas and is enforced by campus police. I spoke to a few students who told me what it's like to be a smoker on campus. San Francisco State University has five designated smoking areas, but there's some confusion as to where they are. There's like maybe one right there, and then one down here, and then one behind towers. It was like three. But you kind of like, until, until someone actually told me like, oh, this is like, you can smoke here. I didn't know it was a smoking area. But it's not. In fact, there are smoking areas under the open windows of a classroom. But it's not just misinformation that draws people to non-designated smoking areas. It's also an issue of convenience. I've been taking classes like at HSS building and it's, I have to walk like half a mile just to smoke a cigarette. It gets really frustrating. It's definitely kind of a nuisance to have to like go all the way over here if I'm all the way across campus. But choosing to smoke in an undesignated area could get you a ticket. The smoke-free campus fine is $58. However, some students believe the threat of being fined is just a threat. There's no real like uh, reinforcement of the laws or anything, to be honest, because I can smoke anywhere on campus if I really wanted to. Campus police declined to comment on their enforcement efforts, but I spoke to Christine Morley with the Smoke Free Campus program here on campus. She told me that the university posted new signs pointing smokers in the right direction, but the smokers I spoke to said new signs don't equal new smoking areas. Live in San Francisco, Oscar Maciel, State of Events. Thanks, Oscar. San Francisco's Fort Mason Center hosted this year's Green Festival over the weekend. The three-day event displayed the most recent breakthroughs in the eco-friendly world. Victoria Alanese got to see firsthand how some inventors are looking outside the pizza box. Victoria? San Francisco as is known as one of the most eco-friendly U.S. cities with waste-free regulations, bans on plastic water bottles and single-use plastic bags, San Francisco's goal is to become completely waste-free by the year 2020. So it's only appropriate the 2014 Green Festival chose San Francisco as this year's host. 
The Fort Mason Center welcomed the 13th annual Green Festival where thousands of people got to check out newer and better ways to live an eco-friendly lifestyle. Whether you wanted some natural beauty products or a greener way to listen to some music, the over 250 eco-friendly vendors had a little something for everyone. And what do most people have in common? A love for pizza. Italian native Fabrizio Cercatore fused together his love for Italian flavor with a healthy that twist. This is my recipe and I use all grain from the United States. All the grain are organic and um, are um, high altitude grain, so that's giving like more quality to the, to the grain. According to a trend tracker, 71% of shoppers consider the environment when they shop. Who is such a high interest in a fairly new business trend, how do you keep customers coming back? In a year, we've developed into a retail company line, food service line, we've expanded our gluten-free line. So all of that has come from customer feedback, requests from customers, customers telling what they want, what they find in other companies, what they lack in other companies. The festival featured vendors from across the world promoting sustainable ways to live greener every day. From cloth diapers to organic chewing gum, vendors offer green alternatives for just about anything. The festival's next stop is Portland, but will return to San Francisco sometime next year. Reporting live in San Francisco, I'm Victoria Alanis. Back to you. Thank you, Victoria. The first spacecraft to touch down on a comet is now in hibernation. The European Space Agency successfully landed a probe on a comet November 12th. The 10-year journey is temporarily stalled after Philae, the space probe, is now in sleep mode because the solar battery died. ESA told the Associated Press that they are very confident that at some stage the probe will reawake. Um, so there is some hope that at some stage when we are closer to the sun, uh, Philae wakes up again and talks to us, but this is... We, we need to be very lucky that this happens. This is most likely to happen next spring as the comet flies closer to the sun, letting the solar panel recharge its battery. The mission's goal is to hopefully give unique insight into the history of our solar system. You may have a harder time listening to your favorite artists for free online. That's because some popular artists are pulling their music from a popular music streaming website. Christy, what does this mean for listeners? Well, Erica, if you love Taylor Swift, then you won't be able to find her music on Spotify anymore. She has pulled all her music off that website. Spotify listeners are disappointed. An online music streaming service, Spotify, has grown in popularity. Users enjoy Spotify for all that it has to offer to them. I personally really enjoy it because, you know, I don't have to illegally download it in order to listen to it. And then I can figure out if I want to buy it or not. So, if anything, I think it benefits them. But now they are starting to have a new battle with the artist. It all began with Taylor Swift. Shortly after releasing her recent album, 1989, Swift took down all her music on the popular site. She says, Important rare things are valuable. Valuable things should be paid for. It's my opinion that music should not be free, and my prediction is that individual artists and their labels will someday decide when an album price point is. Swift doesn't think that Spotify pays them enough. Spotify stated that they pay nearly 70% of their revenue to the music community. And if she stayed, Swift would have earned a $6 million check. Besides Taylor Swift, country artist Jason Aldean has removed his newest album. Artists say they don't like seeing a decline in album sales. They hope by taking their music off Spotify, record sales will increase. Reporting live in the newsroom for State of Events, I'm Christy Reno. Back to you in the studio. What do Kim Kardashian, Victoria's Secret, and Solange Knowles have in common? They are all making entertainment headlines. Bianca De La Paz tells us more about it after the break. And what better way to spend your weekend than learning how to save a life with the NERT program? I'm Oscar Maciel, and that's coming up on State of Events. Coffee awakens all the senses, but only Fair Trade Certified Coffee awakens the sixth sense, the sense of fairness. Fair Trade Certified. Taste fairness. Welcome back to State of Events. Being prepared in case of an emergency is important, but being specifically trained for an emergency is invaluable. Reporter Oscar Maciel visits a special training for ordinary people with extraordinary courage. 
Oscar? So the incident is a fire, okay? So we know what we do as nerds with fire, right? This fire may not look like much, but to the brave men, women, and children of NERD, it's all part of their training. NERD stands for Neighborhood Emergency Response Team. It's an emergency training program developed by the San Francisco Fire Department. Lieutenant Erica Artaceros is San Francisco's NERT program because coordinator. Actually, because of the 1989 earthquake, there was a neighborhood watch group organized through SF Safe that came to the fire department and said, we want to be empowered, we want you to show us what to do. Um, and we train about 1,500 to 2,000 new people every single year. And so to have something still going 24 years later is really amazing. This year's citywide training took place at Galileo High School in the Marina District. Trainees get the chance to see the challenges first responders face during emergencies. NERT training isn't only inside knowledge from firefighters. More experienced NERT members also provide tools and tips on how to stay prepared. Make sure your smoke alarm works. You have cash on hand instead of relying on ATMs. Uh, spare glasses, spare medicine. Longtime volunteer Deborah Harper says NERT is about having answers to difficult questions. So, things kind of come up and you go, well, how would I solve that problem? How would I address that? Uh, Steve has talked about water purification. How would you purify water? Uh, so yeah, just different ideas people have. The solar people over here, they've been cooking. The uh, toilet that's put together with PC piping in a container. So yeah, very interesting stuff. The NERT program offers multiple trainings. It takes six three-hour classes to be NERT certified. The classes are free to the public and offered year-round. From San Francisco, Oscar Maciel, State of Events. Thanks, Oscar. For more information on how to become a NERT member, visit sf-fire.org. Search word N-E-R-T. Things may have took a turn for the scandalous this week, from racy photo shoots to a sultry strut. Entertainment reporter Bianca De La Paz has the scoop. Well, Diane, there's always a lot happening in Hollywood, but this week, Kim Kardashian's famous assets stole the spotlight. Mrs. Kanye West posed in a very revealing cover shoot for Paper Magazine. The seductive photos had many wondering if any extra work was done to Kim's body. Insiders from the shoot insist she is all natural. Some great lighting and a little oil was all it took to get these jaw-dropping snapshots. But the upcoming Victoria's Secret fashion show may just give Kim a run for her money. Performers for this year's Lingerie Fest have been announced. Viewers can expect to see Ariana Grande, Ed Sheeran, and headliner Taylor Swift grace the catwalk. Of course, Alessandra Ambrosio, Adriana Lima, and all of your favorite angels will also be strutting their stuff at this year's event. The 2014 Victoria's Secret Fashion Show will air December 9th on CBS. In other news, congratulations are in order for Solange Knowles and her longtime love, Alan Ferguson. The pair tied the knot in New Orleans over the weekend. The festivities included 100 of the couple's closest friends and family. According to E! News, Jay-Z, Beyonce, and even Blue Ivy were front row center. Photos from the day show nothing but one big happy family, despite rumors that Solange and her brother-in-law have been feuding. Unlike most celebrity weddings, Solange and Alan didn't hide from the media and paparazzi. Photos of the union flooded the internet. So glad everything worked out for them on their very special day. Warm wishes to the newlyweds. That does it for your entertainment weekly wrap. I'm Bianca de la Paz for State of Events. From the 49ers to the Raiders, our sports report is up next. San Francisco State's Cox Stadium has not only been home to the soccer and track, but football as well. But not anymore. Ashley Kane explains why not. Coming up. I'm Christy Reno, and coming up on State of Events, I'll show you how hard it is to learn to juggle. Small businesses are facing expensive energy bills. Much of this expense is generated from lighting. In fact, inefficient lighting can cost small business owners more than they may realize. Smart lights brighten your bottom line. 
Welcome back to State of Events. I'm sports reporter Katie Welge. This past week, the NFL reached week 11 with the Raiders in San Diego and the 49ers in New York at Giants Stadium. Still looking for their first victory of this season, the Oakland Raiders faced one of their AFC West rivals, the San Diego Chargers, last Sunday. The Chargers were coming off of three consecutive losses in a bye week, which made for good timing for a matchup against the Raiders for a more promising win. Some major plays were made, though, on the Raiders' end. Rookie from Buffalo, Khalil Mack, gained his first NFL sack. Mack has said to have a bright future in the NFL. In 49er territory, both Chris Borland and Michael Crabtree had a great game with some major plays. Borland, who has stepped in for Patrick Willis, has been contributing big as he is small for an inside linebacker. The third-round rookie has racked up 47 tackles over the past three games. In Sunday's game, he became the first 49ers linebacker since Ken Norton Jr. in 1995 to score two interceptions in the same game. After three field goals by Dawson, San Francisco stretched the lead to 16-7 early in the third quarter when Kaepernick found Crabtree across the middle and outran five defenders for a 48-yard catch and run. The Niners have a 6-4 record, though it seems as if Coach Harbaugh can't escape the drama lately. During the game, linebacker Ahmad Brooks benched himself in the second quarter and never returned. NFL media insider Ian Rappert reported that Brooks removed himself after learning he would share the time that anticipated as uh, his position with Alden Smith and Aaron Lynch. In the post-game conference, Coach Harbaugh stated that the team needs Brooks to win a championship game and later admitted that everything was fine with the linebacker. Stay tuned. San Francisco State University offers 12 sports programs, but football isn't one of them. Reporter Ashley Keene spoke with some of the campus community to see how they feel about it. Ashley? Thanks, Katie. And it hasn't always been that way. San Francisco State did have a football team for over 60 years. I found out what it would take to bring a team back and if it's something the students in school are interested in. Touchdown, Gator! Due to limited funding, the football team was cut in 1995. This did not come as much of a surprise at the time because the team had not had a winning season since 1973. Jack Hyde, who had been coaching soccer at SF State since the retirement of the team, says he's noticed a difference in the athletics for the better. I think students have gotten behind the other teams on campus. All that uh, fan support that was going there has been spread out. Students today feel having a football team could be beneficial to the athletic program. I think if, uh, if there was a football team, we'd probably get more funding and uh, there'd probably be more support. Um, I wish we had a football team because I feel like we get a lot more support from other students for just for the whole athletic department. I feel like a lot of students here don't even know we have sports teams. Athletic Director Charles Guthrie stands behind the students and their wishes, but before tackling the addition of another team, his attention is on the existing ones. My job is to make sure that the programs we have here today are doing well. Um, get the resources behind the programs we have. We have 12 sports right now, and as you can see from the standings, we're slowly creeping up into the top half of the bracket. And so what we're doing is investing in the programs we have. If the students showed enough desire to bring a football team back, the athletic director said they could make it happen. It would take a lot of work from a lot of people and a lot of money but he's not ruling anything out. Reporting live in San Francisco, I'm Ashley Keene, State of Events. Katie, back to you. Thanks, Ashley. Well, that's all for sports. Back to you, Erica and Diane. Thanks, Katie. The key to learning popular circus trick is all about timing. One, two, and three may become your favorite numbers when learning to juggle. And you can learn this free in San Francisco. State of Events' Chrissy Reno shows you how. Clubs. <laughs> rings, and balls. These are the various items people juggle at Circus Center in San Francisco. Every Sunday, Jade teaches a free class to teach people to juggle. The class ranges from first-time jugglers to more experience. Jordy has been juggling for a month and says there are some health benefits to it as well. Because I saw a special on how to hack your brain. And they said in it that one of the best things that you can do to speed up your uh, processing of your brain and your peripheral vision is juggling. So I thought, well, I'll try it again. And I really love it because it gets me out of my head. And I can't be thinking what I'm doing. So it's very relaxing. But juggling does take lots of practice. A three ball cascade takes about seven hours to learn. And that's the end result. People of all ages come to Circus Center to practice their juggling. Jade learned how to juggle just from a pamphlet. 
He likes passing the hobby on to others. Once you learn a three ball cascade, once you get to be able to do a three ball cascade, you'll start teaching people. You'll discover, hey, this isn't hard at all, this is easy. And the, the tricks I showed you to learn to, to juggle, you can teach somebody else. In fact, that's the way jugglers mostly work. The class is held every Sunday from 2 to 4.30 at Circus Center on Frederick Street. In San Francisco, for State of Events, I'm Christy Reno. Thanks, Christy. Well, that's going to wrap up State of Events. I'm Diane Tell. And I'm Erica Cattery. We'll see you next week.